about a month ago, I published our overview of the Inasuman TV series. It showed that went through significant retooling throughout its 25 episode run as it struggled in the ratings and experienced budgeting difficulties due to the emerging oil crisis. These challenges plus changes in the production team eventually led to a reboot of the concept that would start its broadcast on April 9th of 1974, Inasuman Flash. This sequel series would continue to feature the character of Watari Goro and his heroic alter ego, Inasuman. But the backdrop to Goro's battle against the Despar army would take on a darker tone than its predecessor. This transition was facilitated by episodes 24 and 25 of Inasuman, which introduced the Despar army and showcased Emperor Bamba's final battle against Inasuman. But before these episodes aired on television, fans of Inasuman had an opportunity to see this transition from a different, bigger scale, cinematic perspective. On March 16 of 1974, Flying from the Movie Screen, Inasuman, premiered during Toei's Manga Festival. The movie was a theatrical presentation of Emperor Bamba's downfall and the arrival of the Despar army. But while the core elements are similar to the TV series narrative, the way in which the story unfolds is radically different. In some respects, this theatrical retelling of the story mimics one of the marquee features that played alongside this movie, Massinger Z vs. The Great General of Darkness. This work, which is one of my favorite anime films of all time, is a spectacular presentation of Massinger Z's final battle and Great Massinger's inaugural appearance. Like in Asuman, this movie served as an in-between feature to bridge the original TV series with its sequel. Flying from the movie screen, Inasman opens with Goro, who is standing by the sea, lost in thought. He's there in response to a direct challenge from Emperor Bamba. Suddenly, he's surrounded by 14 different mutant robots he had previously defeated. As he fights his way through this horde of enemies, a mysterious figure surfaces from a hidden spot and begins to attack the Kaijin and Inasuman. Confused by the attack and assuming Goro has a hidden ally, the mutant robots flee and the battle ends. As Goro drives away from this area, he has a run-in with Michiru, who is standing in the middle of the road and staring at the sky. She tells Goro that a plane carrying her father will fall from the sky as her eyes shine with a bright blue light. Goro immediately realizes that she's a mutant with the ability to predict the future as they witness her prediction come true. At her house, Michiru discovers that Goro is Inasuma and makes another prediction, one that centers on the leader of the Despart army. Fuhrer Geisel, and how only Inasuman would be able to stop his evil plot. They are interrupted by the ring of the house's phone. Michiru's dad is calling her because as it turns out, he didn't make the flight that crashed. Excited, Michiru heads off to meet him at Haneda Airport. Meanwhile, in Emperor Bamba's dungeon, the desperate forces break through the Phantom Army's defenses and take the Emperor and Stone Bambara hostage. After introducing himself, Missile Despar triggers a short battle between their forces, which comes to a sudden conclusion when the Emperor and Stone Bambara escape. They will resurface later alongside the surviving mutant robots to reveal to Goro that they kidnap Mishiru. The Emperor uses this situation to offer Inasuman a deal. Join forces so that they can take on the Dessler army together. Upon refusing Bamba's offer, the Emperor has Mishiru thrown off the hill 
and orders the Kaijin to attack Inasman. After defeating the mutant robots, Bambara reveals his true form to Inasman, Fiery Fighter. The deadly duel ends with the defeat of Bambara and the arrival of the Desper army. This leads to Inasuman's first battle against their forces and a duel against Missile Despar. The battle to protect humanity is about to take a new direction. As a promotional vehicle for Inasuman Flash, this movie succeeds in presenting a fast-moving, action-packed story that, while lacking depth or internal consistency, is really fun to watch. Watching Inasman fight the revived mutant robots from the TV series in a larger scale presentation, backed by jagged explosions, more intricate hand-to-hand -hand combat sequences, all while Mishiaki Watanabe's incredible music is playing in the background, is what this era of tokutatsu is all about. Like the previous two Toei Hero 3D movies featuring Kikaider and Kamen no Ninja Akakage, flying from the movie screen in Asuman makes use of 3D effects to highlight and bring more excitement to key moments in the movie. In the case of Inasuman, this element is limited primarily to the movie's action scenes, which are preemptively announced by Goro before the 3D effect is activated. Overall, this movie works as a way to build hype for Inasuman Flash and the title character's upcoming battle against this fearsome new enemy. I feel the TV series did a better job at conveying the idea that the Desper Army was a stronger and larger enemy force for Goro to take on, but the movie's battles are better produced. Either way, I recommend watching both this movie and the last couple of episodes of Inasuman before making the jump to Inasman Flash.